So today, obviously, with myself, Stuart, we're going to be talking through expansion joints on the live masterclass today. We're going to be working on expansion joints using the E280, and then we're going to show you how them compare with the different clauses we've got and different scenarios that you will come across on your roofs using expansion joints. And we'll also go through the uh, ER3540 simulated lead roll. So if you want to do a little feature roof, and they work in the same concepts as the actual E280s as well. So moving on then, obviously with the expansion joints, there's a lot of work to do before and on obviously positioning of the joints and position of where these expansion joints should be going. Now you have obviously got the technical helpline here at Curie where you can send any pictures, diagrams over to one and we'll gladly assist you on where these would be best suited to position. But the rule of thumb that we do stand by is obviously for roofs on larger roofs, expansion joints are needed on anything over 100 square metres. Anything under under square meters, you're completely fine, depending on the length of the roof as well. So anything over 12 millimeters, then we'll look at incorporating an expansion joint on that. So anything over 12 millimeters, or any roofs of the size of 100 square meters or more, then we'll start looking at it. So if you're doing an 180 square meter roof, we'll look at putting one expansion joint down the middle. Obviously, bear in mind with drainage pipes with expansion joints, so we've got to make sure they don't obstruct any drainage as well. So we're going to be looking at that as well as the actual structure as well. So when we position your joists, now it could be where you've got the existing joists, or you could be putting new joists in, which I'll show you four scenarios. So if you are putting two existing joists, what you will need to do, so if your actual joist is going to be here, and you, you, your gap between your board, it's going to be in what we're going to do is create a 25 minute expansion gap. So, we're going to split the roof up into sections as well using the uh, E280. So, wherever your board finishes, if it lands between the joists, then we're going to need to strengthen up there. Because what you'll have then is your boards, when you position your boards on, and we leave that 25 minute expansion gap to allow these boards to expand, then you're not going to have any supports in between them. So, we need to make sure we strengthen the depth and put adequate supports in place for the actual decking boards themselves. And to do that, if it's going to existing joists, you just knock them out, just using timbers, and we'll just put noggings in between. So you put them noggings in between, we space them no more than 600 mil centers. The easiest way, once you've cut them, it's just to screw them in or use your nail gun, and we'll just fire the fixings in just to hold these noggings in place which will then give us a nice secure finish to your boards. You can fit your boards on. These can be nailed as well, so using just your ring shanks, or you can also use your nail guns if you've got them, which will save you a lot of time. Position your joists, position your noggings in between your joists, as I say, no more than 600 mil centers, and just with your hammer or your nail gun, secure them. In place, making sure the flush to the top, we just fix them both sides, doubling up on both sides to secure that. Save any twisting, you know, that way you've got a nice solid fixing throughout. So, we'll just finish these off and I'll screw them up so you've got a nice fixing. So just secure these in place. Nice and easy. And then we've got a nice solid ground to work on. If you're going up to new joists and you're going to separate your joists and you're going to fit them in on sites as well, then it's easy enough to just double joist it. And by double joisting it, you'll obviously sit on the side of the other. That way then will give you enough room so when you put your decking boards on, that will support both sides of that board. You'll get a nice support on either side with that 25 mil gap. That way then we can put plenty of fixing down that edge and secure it. So it's a lot better if you can double joist it. it always saves a lot of time and it's a lot easier to do. Obviously double joisting, we need to make sure we bolt it together and to bolt them, Obviously, clamp them in line, so you want to keep them in height the same as we did with the, the actual noggings themselves. And just using a flat fish, depending on what the coach bolt is, and we're going to bolt the two together. So we're going to secure them in place 
center of the actual joist itself and then just using your coach bolt so we've got your bolt and your washer and we're just going to fit that through into it and we're going to secure the two together just by using the wrap tip or the spanner and that way then we can tighten the two together make them nice and secure and then you get that nice solid finish for your actual depth to go on. So you're not securing it in. Now roughly your spacings on them depends, and the rule of thumb with that is normally depending on your centres. So if you've got 400 mil centres, then you'll do them at 800 mil spacing. So every every bolt to 800 mil spacings, and you don't want to go any more than 1200. So if it is 600 centres, you're not going to go any more than 1200 on the spacings. But normally if you're using 400 spacings on your centres. 800 is fine. Once they're all secured in, so that's your two ways to secure your actual uh, decking board down. That way, then we get a nice solid fix as we go. Now, we're going to put the boards, and the boards are going to be secured down. So, we're going to screw them as we do normally using pretty standard wood screws. And they're at every 200 mil centers. So, obviously, secure them right around the neck. Come in, probably about 8 mil from the sides. So obviously we do not you can get nice fittings on the head and get a nice solid deppy. Any button wall, the standard will only have 25 mil gap. Same again, we need them boards to expand the contracts as well. So your next board, wherever we've got the double joints, we're gonna make sure. Same as anything, we're going to allow a 25 mil expansion gap. Now, as you can remember, all the boards, what it is with the expansion and the roofers, with the curic resins, they are formulated for expansion. So they have a duraflex technology in the resin, which allows for all movement, and that allows for everything within the structure. The building envelope itself has got loads of different materials used. Obviously, the decking, the timber, the joists, they're all going to want to expand the contract as well. And that's what this expansion joint does. So if you imagine you've got six boards, and each board wants to move two mil, we've got to allow that line allowance in them boards. And what we're going to do is just give a 25 mil gap to allow for each deck to move. Then again, we're going to fix it down. So along them joints, we've got decent fixing positions now. 25 mil gap. And then just secure them down to 200 mil centres. You can get the answers. It's important that we get a good support and we get them on the edges. Where well, you've got your double joist, obviously you've got that full length of timber. <laughs> you can burn them at 200 mil centre all the way down the edge and burn out. But for me, it's a lot better and a lot easier if you do double joist it. But obviously, fully to existing joists, you are governed by the system. <laughs> and obviously, your next board then, so we're running it through. And then we'll leave a 25 mil expansion gap. So I'm going to show you the two different expansions as well today. And I'll show you the different clauses. What an action and a beach, and I'll show you what clauses to use on that. Same again, just about securing the gas. This is an important stage in the current system to show you the gas is it's fully secured, fully supported, as we are going to be bombing. It is important that the deck is. Sound the Once you get it's fully secured. Once we've got our spacing, then we can start to move on to the trim stage. Now the trims we're going to be using first of all is we've got your, your C11D, which is where we're going to marry up to our D trim. But we're going to show you how to use this closure in conjunction with the E28. We've got there, so you've got that raised edge roll. And what we're going to do in effect is we're going to bridge that gap we just made with the decking, and then this will allow each roof to expand and contract as and when it needs to. And I'm also going to show you how to do the C9, uh, C9A, which is going to an H in on this little detail here as well. So, starting off, obviously, I need my drip edges off. So, I'm just standing the trim. So, I've got my drip edge, 
and I'll show you as well we can trim along the back. When we put the drip edge on, we still need to allow for this area here, so I'm still going to need to cut that 25 mil gap. I'm still going to need a nice solid run break all the way through that roof. I'm going to just cut that with my tin. tin stick. I'll just show you the fixings of your trim. Now it can be done with your tin snip on any of the trims as you're probably aware of, but also if you've got access to a grinder, it does make cutting them trims a lot easier. So just some of the things we're going to just send them through. And then we're just going to put that in. In an actual decking. Obviously, with using this, we're going to put the trim adhesive on. So the trim adhesive, and this works really well when we're using the expansion joints, is, is it sticks and bonds the PU trim adhesive? It sticks and bonds, but also remains flexible, which is what we want. We really we want everything to move with the variation in temperature. But also, by putting it to the pattern as well, we get that nice solid fix. So it does stop any uplift of wind, so these are not flapping around. We've got a nice fix to that batten, and we don't need to put any fixings in here. We've got a nice smooth GRP edge, what your customers will see on the front. Fixing it down, just using your standard cock nails. So we'll go out like so. And we'll fix this. Right. 200 mil centers to work well. Then again, so we'll fix the other side, leaving that gap. So we've got that little gap area where our expansion is going to bridge over, and then we'll just that's down along as well. So we'll allow for that. So the trim is short. Either or you can start the back view from whatever works for yourself. But on the back here, I've got me the D26 then, more for the trim. Same as always, we're going to need to make sure we push it up, get it nice and secure, but we're also going to cut that D trim as well along that. We're going to allow that 25 mil gap as well, so that break runs all the way through. Using your, your tin steps, put on your grinder. Then we don't need to secure the back with any trim adhesive at all. That's just going to fit where it sits. We're going to push it up tight, leaving that gap area, and then we're going to fix it down to the deck. So just give it a good push up. Now, depending on what the floor is, the best way to understand it is obviously where the water runs. On this side, we're going to come from your back and fold the roof's going to be this way. We'll show you which way to overlap the gym just to stop any buildup of water and also anything tracking back in between any joints or seals, etc. Then again, we're going to gap in and then we're going to fix that down to that deck in here. Coming into the closure, what you're looking for is you're going to put this actual C11 on here, but what we don't want to do is if we put the Trim over the top, we've got, we've got that little step detail, we've got that build up of water, so we're going to look to get it that way over so that water runs off, it doesn't trap back up, it doesn't interfere, anything. everything overlaps and runs as you're going across that roof. Obviously, you play your drip edge on, you've got that point here, and that's going to be the lowest part of the roof. So if we were to sit that over the top, same again, we've got that stop of water, so we need to make sure that goes on first. So start from your lowest point. And work your way back up to your roof. Start this C9 uh, closure. What we're going to do is just put a couple of beads of trim adhesive. You can put it on the trim. What we're going to do is we're going to secure that in place. Personally, I prefer to use two two beads of trim adhesive, but it's up to yourselves. It's a lot easier just to you put plenty of trim adhesive on and secure that in place. What we're going to do is lift it underneath underneath the drip. And then send it over to that point there. I'm going to just secure that down to the deck. Just push it in place where it's going to go. Make sure it's covering that. Punching joint. And then you've got that earlier then. Fully sealed off over the drip edge. And we've got that closure on. 
Next one is your E280. Now the E280 is going to go all the way across, up and around that edge earlier now. Now when you're using the E280, wherever you join and overlap, you can't actually bandage it. And this is a little sample I've done as well. What we don't want to do when we're laminating, which I'll explain, is, is when we put the bandage on where the fixings are, we don't want to laminate over the top of this. The moment we laminate over this, you end up making it more rigid. That way then you can't expand and contract. You're going to restrict the movement and you're going to end up with little crap details or flaking top or on them areas as well. But you can bandage them joints as long as it's just bandaged to that area and it will still remain flexible. So it will seal up over them joints. You can run it through and just use your PU, but PU over and then bandage over any then to secure that. But what we don't want to do is run the full matting over the top. Obviously, fixing that down, position it up to your D-trim where it needs to be, and then we should secure that down with the trim adhesive. Same again, two beads of trim adhesive. Like so, so put a nice piece of bead across, and then I'll just place that over the top of where it's going. And then I'm going to push that tight up to that point. Push it tight in, make sure it's nice and flush to your closure. And then we can fix that down. Nice and flush. And then obviously just work your way across. Then you're going to have your C11 D closure going over the top of this now. So that's going to form over the top. We're going to bed it in flush to that D trim. And we're going to secure that down to the deck as well. Make it nice and secure. Obviously, we trim adhesive again, so up the edges here, we're going to go two beads. So plenty of trim adhesive. And along the top of the raised edge roll. And then back down and over. Of course, we're putting plenty of trim adhesive on. And then we can secure that where it needs to be. Push it flush up to that back point. And then secure that down to the deck. And I like to just work the way in. Right there. And we'll just secure that down as you go. Making sure that trim is nice and flat. That's the first one. The second one, I'll move you over to if you're using your B trim. So if you're using your B trim, then we'll show you now exactly. I'll do that. So if you've got the raised edge trim at the front, which I'll secure down, we're going to use the C8B trim, uh, C8B trim, sorry. We're going to use that, and you don't need to show you the D, we've just showed you what to do on the back. You wouldn't necessarily have a D on there with a the raised edge, it'd probably be an A, so on. I will show you now the trim, so we're going to secure them trims in place. So say it again, as we did before, you have your trim adhesive. These would be all the way across that slave button. And then we can secure that trim down. Start from underneath your back again, we're going to secure that in place. And we're going to need that 25mm gap again, throughout the trim, throughout that deck. Secure it down. Same on this side. So it's about positioning your trims, getting them in first. And then obviously forward the on the floor of water, which way it's going to go. And then you've got here a battery going to overlap, and all the water's going to run that way, so we're going to need to put obviously the E280 on first and foremost, and we're going to put it to where it needs to be, like so. And then we're just going to put that down. Just making sure you cut that gap. You can see there it's covered the joint, covered the gap, leads that to that expansion area, and then we can secure them. Again. And if you have any of these trims, they can be cut off, they can be used from what we do recommend as well before top coating to really give them a good stretch up. They are hand molded, so they do need to just give a little key up, and then we can bond the top coat to it a lot better. So again, a couple of beads of trim adhesive up and over. I like to just do the two beads myself. 
and then we can apply that CA bead trim over the top. Got your trim adhesive all secured in place, fixed down. Also, have as well if you want to. Usually, we have a C5 on closures. Now, with these closures, what you do get is a tapered finish, and you also get a nice flush finish. So whatever you want to finish it, especially on the detail route, you can use either or. So, you can use your flush finish if you fix that down, and then we can pin you over the top of that and secure that in place. Or, alternatively, you can secure that down, pin your trim adhesive, and have that nice. Smoother finish. Then again, these can all be cut and shaped to suit. They come a little bit bigger, larger than the size of you want, just trim them down, just neaten them up. And then what we'll do now is we'll bandage over these areas, like so here. So I'll just do a little bit of bandage work for you. Make sure at this stage we do the preparation and bandage. So obviously you go into your bandage, and I would put your gloves on for this stage. So when we are bandaging, we need to make sure we cover any of the fixings. So this is just the preparation stage. Before we start mixing any matting now at this stage, we're going to then get our bandage cut to size. So what we're going to do is we go across this area here. Any fixings, we're going to cover them over along that front, etc. Like so. So once you've got your Oh, your bandage cut, I'm just going to leave them to one side and then I'll put my main, my main matting out at this stage. I'll roll your matting out and obviously we don't want to go over the top of these. Obviously, if we went over the top, as I mentioned earlier on, what you're going to do then is you're going to restrict that movement, you're going to make it more rigid. So we only need to run the matting to the underside and we're just going to score it underneath, cut it through. And you won't damage the trim anyway, you might just put a little scratch on it. That's completely fine, and then we can start to, to laminate that up like so. So we're only bandaging around and fixings, and obviously laminating over the main body of the roof. So roll this back up, and then I can start to, to put my laminating on that. So with the resin, what we've got is I've put the resin into the mixing bucket. And as we spoke about quite a few times on the master classes of the mixing book and how it works, and I'll just briefly go over for you. What you've got is you've got your measuring, measuring gauge, and that's on 600 gram matting, 450, and you've also got your top coat gauge as well. And that's based in square meters, so all the coverage is worked out for you. So if you're using a 450, that requires one and a half kilos uh, resin per square meter, and the 600, two kilos of resin per square meter, and top coat, not by four kilos per square meter. So all the maths, all the work that we've done for you in square meters on that bucket. When you go across the other side, which is the next important part is the hardening addition. Now that determines how much hardening to put in. What you've got is the really hot days, which is what we're at today. Then you've got your warm, your cool, and your cold. So whatever height of resin's in your bucket at the time, we're going to go across, and then we're just going to work on what percentage and what it says there on the hardening addition. It's telling me there, I need 30 mil of hardening if it's a hot day, one day, six day, nine day, one twenty. So I'm gonna work on that hot day, it's nice and warm today. I'm gonna to put that 30 mil of hardener in. Now using your safety dispenser, put your hardener into your safety dispenser and then you've got your measuring cylinder on that which goes up in 10 mil increments. So I'm just gonna squeeze it up to whatever my bucket says, which is 30 mil. Squeeze it to the 30 mil marking and then pop that in and do it that way. Obviously, at this stage, especially if you're outside and you're working, I would recommend using your safety glasses, especially when you're mixing outdoor. It's not so bad indoor, but when you're outdoor, you want to make sure you contain it. There can be a bit of wind, which will travel as well. Obviously, give it a good mix up. So once you put your hardener in, get yourself a little mixing stick, and we're just going to mix all that resin and harden together. Now, same as anything, it does require the hardening, polyester beds. If you don't put the hardener in, it won't cure. So it's important you make sure you put the hardener in. What you'll see over time, you'll see a colour change. So it's gone from that green colour, and then you'll see it start to go like a honey brown colour over time. You've still got plenty of working time with that colour change, but that's a visual indicator of everything's doing. So once you mix it all up, 
then I'm going to get out the three inch roller and then we're going to go over all that bandage work first of all. So, the first stage is working that bandage. And we've already got everything pre cut in our preparation stage. And then we're just going to get our resin on our roller and we're just going to coat over all them fixings, all them areas we're going to apply the bandage. Make sure there's a decent amount of resin on. And you want to make sure your roller's full at all times. Make sure you fill it up, get plenty of resin on, and apply your bandage. And when you're putting your bandages on, obviously let that soak into the matting. But what we don't want to do is put dry bandage on top of dry bandage. We need to make sure we soak at least one side of the bandage out every time. What I'll do is I'll just put them two sides on, more resin over the top, so we'll never put dry matting on dry matting. We're always soaking it out. The process is always resin on the deck, pour your matting, and then more resin over the top. You want to make sure there's no white areas, make sure all the fibers are completely coated with the resin as well. Not a little piece for here. So again, plenty of resin on your roller, get it dripping, get it full, and then we'll just apply that on. Generous amount, what you'll do is over a larger roof, obviously, we'll give it time to break down. It is quite quick and jumping on it right now. But obviously you want to give it time to break down, break the matting down, and then you can go over with your little small paddle roller. And I'll just jump over this quickly for you. The way you want to do is give it about four or five passes. As I say, it is still a little bit early. And obviously you can still paddle roll it, but it takes a little bit longer for it to break everything down. So as long as you leave it, just give it about a minute or so, and it'll make paddle rolling a lot easier. Just going to go over the movies, make sure you cover that matting half on the trim, half on the deck, covering the fixings, and nice and steady. Don't want to go too quick, we're just going to guide it through. And you want to get that squelching noise, what you'll hear is that squelching disappears. So when we get that squelching noise up, so that earlier then when it's fully, fully barrel rolled. That's a good indication. Of course, you can see it's nice and clear when you come back that early with a cure and you go straight over the top with your main matty. And with your main matty, you're just going to use our large roller. So I'll use the, the six inch roller and get plenty of resin on. And the coverage is one and a half kilos, as I spoke about. And the rule of thumb for that is we'll put three rollerfuls of resin on the deck. So three six inch stripping rollerfuls, like to that on the deck first, over that square metre. So I'll put me three. And then I'll roll my matting over the top. It is a lot less than a metre, obviously, on this little jig for us. And then we'll roll the matting over the top of the area we've wet out. And then we want to put a further six rollerfuls of resin over that square metre of matting. And that's based on working it on roughly about a quick of your rollerful as you go. If you want to put at least Six of them on. So three on the base, six on the top, and that should give you roughly one and a half kilos of resin per square meter. Just coating it on nice and easy. And just take it down, making sure you cover over every bit of matting, making sure there's plenty of resin going in between them fibers, and there's enough coverage. Like so. Let's just say these expansions, we don't want to come up and over, you restrict that movement. There we go, give it time to break down. Break your matting down, obviously, give it about a minute or so, and then you can jump on with your power roller and just do exactly the same as we did before. Then you're working it in, four or five matches, get that ready to do, get right into the corner. So four or five passes, and you'll hear that structure noise again, but that's disappeared. Like so. And then you're left with a nice fully laminated area. You just continue that process throughout the group. Obviously, any areas at the end there, nice little tip to just feather them out. That way, you don't see where your roof finish you do your matting, you blend it nice and neatly into that GRP edge trim and any areas of that that real force with the matting. Brush any excess off if you can and that's your laminating with all your different expansion joints. 
built in as well. As I say, you've got the technical garden, so if you do need any help on expansion joints, I will just briefly go through the simulated lead roll and we'll just pop this jig on the top. So going on about the, the ER35 to 40 chin, which is mainly for a, a feature roof. So what we do have is a smaller version, so it's a simulated lead roll effect. And you can get that little detail on your roof, like so. So you can separate them out, make them nice and neat on that roof, and then you can position them where they need to go. Now it is a feature roof, and we do also have the little six C6 closures for them as well. So you've got the little closures you can put on, whether it be a tape hoop or also a squared edge as well. So you've got the option there. You can even dress them in a bit of matting yourself if you want to. The key is obviously positioning, put them in your centres, fix them down, so we'll still fix them down to both sides, and then you can bandage up them trims like so. You can also run over the top of this bit of matting, this is not an expansion joint, but you can run over the top of it to add a bit more strength. But if you do want to, and I think the easiest way, me personally, what I have to do is to laminate the whole roof, and then I'll stick them down with the trim adhesive, so I'll put a couple of these Trim adhesive on the back just before continuous B, like so. And then I'll stick that to the laminate surface. So we'll stick that to the surface, press it where it needs to be, and then we'll bandage over them joints. So we'll put any fixings through there, and I'll bandage that joint, blend everything in. And what you've got then is if that trim does break, it's still secured, you've still got that that membrane underneath. So if there is any trouble with the trim or the crack or break or whatever happens when someone walks on them, when the cleaner breaks and it does happen, you're still covered underneath. If you do fix them down and bandage it and use your matting, you've still got that little area there if anything does happen where it can damage your boards all the time. So that's another little tip if you do want to use the simulated leg. Just pee you them on, stick them where they need to be, bandage over that joint just to blend it in and then you can top coat over that. And obviously with your trim, your closures, just another little bead of trim adhesive, up and round, stick your trim on where they need to be. And then you've got that nice closure edge if you want to. And then also all that nice taping edge as well if you want to apply your trim adhesive on over that free. Now you can bandage this joint. So obviously you're over that area then once it's secured down, we can bandage that or you can dress your own in, like so, and then run your matty to suit. So that's your different options. You can tie these into the raised edge roll, your raised edge roll, your E280 will work as a ridge as well. And that works really well if you've got a pitch roof and you're forming that up and over your ridge. It will bend and form that earlier. But this is a feature roof. This shows you how to, just in between, if you want to, use that as well. So it's the same process, but obviously you don't need to gap the boards and fix them down, or do, as I said, secure it down with trim adhesive and bandage. That's it really for today's Pasta Class. Yeah, these Pasta Classes will be up on the YouTube channel if you do want to access them. Obviously, bear in mind we've got the technical helpline as well and support available, so if there is any questions or any areas, or if you do have a large roof and you want a little bit of assistance with it, please feel free, send it over. We'll have a look at where to position your expansion joints and if it does need it, we can use it elsewhere with step downs, etc. But yeah, we'll gladly have a look at that over for you. But the rule of thumb is every 100 square meters, try and break it up or anything longer than 12 linear meters. Has anybody got any questions at all? If you have, feel, feel free to unmute yourself and fire away or put it in the chat, whatever suits yourself. But yeah, any questions? No, I well, hope it's been worthwhile to you. You've gained some experience and some knowledge. So if you do need any other master classes or you want anything put it on, email through to us and we'll get that subject on for you. But we've got a couple more up and running for the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned and I hope we'll see you all again on some more master classes. But for me, thanks a lot for tuning in. And I'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Thank you.